it's not called that. Uh, welcome to the voyage logs of Robbie Cumming. Star date. Just, it's August. Last time you saw me, we weren't having very much fun uh, <laughs> flooding the boat and just general welding issues. Uh, left me a bit fed up. So, we are heading into Doncaster this week. Well, technically right now I'm filming in Sheffield, but I'm way behind on editing due to work at the moment. Just summer is always really, really busy for me. So anyway, without further ado, welcome to the show. This is the show right now. This is it. You're watching it. These are 72 hour moorings, you've, you've not got a lot of time to explore, hence why I'm making this video for you, uh, if, you if you're doing what, exactly what I'm doing. I did arrive here, I had a good old weekend um, on the moorings there, and then I decided that because I needed a lot more time for just getting on with work and stuff, you know, in normal sort of work week, what I did was called up the lovely people at Strawberry Island Boat Club, and these people are just really friend a really friendly boat club that's just outside of Doncaster. Um, for locals, it's just by the home base on a on a road out of Doncaster to the um, to the northeast, and it's another world. You know, you go in there and uh, it's completely different to the surrounding industrial area. So you've got all these lovely boats around. Um, there's so many boats packed in there. It's amazing. And um, for visitors like me, I could just moor up there on the side and uh, enjoy a really quiet stretch of the water. Hardly any boats going past, apart from this oil tanker. <laughs> Which is of course the Exol Pride, which I may do a special on if I can somehow get them to let me go on board and have a little ride around. So the moorings there, very peaceful as, as I said, you've got the water point and stuff, all the sort of most things that you'd need. Um, and they've also got a nice little clubhouse where they sell, serve Sam Smith's beer, so um, yeah, you're pretty catered for. But I, I didn't drink at all that week, I was just uh, getting the head stuck into work and going for little runs and things like that and just exploring the area. So let's now go back to the 72 hour moorings. Look at that, we're going through the gate and up into the town, here we go. If you've been following my vlogs, you'll know by now I'm not a historian, I just call it like it is. So, my first impression of Doncaster was just walking past this B&M store, and, which is just like a you know discount store, and then just seeing loads of rubbish strewn everywhere in sort of industrial areas. So, yeah, initially I'm just thinking, ugh, what am I doing here? But as soon as you start exploring the actual market area and the town itself, it sort of starts to liven up, um, especially when you get talking to some of the locals. I'm going to tell you a little story now about my first proper big night out in Doncaster. So it all started at the Cask Corner, which is my dive bar of the week. Dive bar of the week. So this place is fantastic. There's a, a real character outside, as you can see, doing his little hat thing there. And inside, it's just a real mishmash of various different items on the walls, not you know, artwork and everything. It's really, really cool. Um, but yeah, it is a dive bar. So obviously the toilets and uh, the upstairs rooftop garden, they they need a little bit of love. Um, but the bar stuff, Chrissy, shout out to Chrissy and um, friends. Yeah, all really friendly people. Um, and although like most of the chat was me asking them what Doncaster was like to live in and then them saying, oh, it's shit. Uh, but aside from that, great laugh. And um, 
yeah, sort of got taken out on a pub crawl with one of them. So this guy c comes in, has a few drinks, and uh, his name was um, He went left and then came back and he said, have you finished your pint? And I'm just about to finish it and go home, basically. He said, come with me and I'll show you real the real Doncaster. So, you know, how can I resist? So in the interests of pure journalism, I'm creating these little guides for you, tagged along and we went to certain disreputable places that um, probably made worse by us being there and um, this fella sparking up spliffs everywhere we go. He kept saying to me, it's all right, I'm a local. No, they're not going to throw us out, but we got thrown out about two or three times, which is ridiculous. If, if you're watching from another country, yeah, it is still not legal in the UK to smoke cannabis or marijuana in a um, public establishment. But we did manage to get some nice places under our belt. We went to uh, the Mason's Arms, which was very nice inside. Good jukebox there. And, uh, you know, not half bad beers as well. And a nice little garden out the back. And then the next one we went to was the Queen, which was just a place where you'd get um, real posh sort of craft beer sort of stuff or, or real ales and um, also Mexican food as well. Unbelievably, we weren't hungry, so we pressed on to the courtyard. Now this is where I realised that Doncaster is a little bit back in time in a way because the DJs were spinning like the best house music from like Ibiza 2001. Yeah, hearing things like obviously music sounds better with you, absolute tune and certain other classics. But yeah, it was, you know, it was not one of those places I'd normally go and drink. It was not a pub of the week, but it was great fun and um, a proper sort of British summer, almost like a Spanish summer really, because it felt like I was on holiday with Brits abroad. That's what it felt like. So, pub of the week. Pub of the week, sponsored by George Blankenship, Bert Schmid, Tom Wellich, Pete Edwards, and Robert Murphy. Cheers, guys. Extra thanks to Ian Gates, Mandy Smith, Sue Smith, and John Rice. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, it's very hoppy. Thanks, William. Pub of the week is The Draftsman. And that is actually on platform 3B of the train station in Doncaster. And again, I'm not a historian, but what they've done to the inside is absolutely amazing. If you like history, you, you know, you like your, your trains as well, then that, obviously that's the place. But what they really excel at is the service straight off the bat. You know, it's so welcoming and you can try various different drinks without feeling like you're taking the piss. And these guys know their stuff. So it's Luke and Russ who, who run the place. So if you meet them, say hello from me. Yeah, so you got some, I had, I had some amazing beer there. I had a Brewdog Hop Fiction, which is a seasonal pale ale, I think. And then I also had uh, this one, Cold Conscience, which is, yeah, really refreshing. I love re refreshing beers rather than stuff that's really hoppy. And um, yeah, I, I think I realized my tastes have changed a lot because normally I would, I would have been just happy having a pint of Foster's or something like that. Um, so don't judge. So the Draftsman, it's definitely your place if you like that sort of stuff and just like a nice quiet atmosphere where you can also have a coffee if you want and not feel pressured into having a drink. Well worth missing your train for. So after leaving Doncaster, which I haven't actually got any footage of because I was just on a mission to get there, um, you go through a couple of locks and you, you reach a place called Sprotborough um, and it's absolutely beautiful there. Um, yeah, I don't know why I haven't got any footage of it. I think it was because I was only there for one night and I had to push on the next day. But if you're a visitor to the South Yorkshire Navigations, definitely try and stay there for a while because it's just a beautiful area, peaceful. And although the pub's not that great, um, it's still a good little spot there. And to carry on the theme of people large in it and having a, a jolly good time, here's a little clip of the party boat that uh, runs in the Sprotborough area. Have a look at this. In conclusion, people from Yorkshire, they like to have a good time, trust me. On the next episode, I'll be delving into the engine bay because we've got a tr we've got some problems there. I think a lot of subscribers have told me recently um, I've got to have a go at the valve clearances and sort that out. 
and yeah they could be right it's not going to make the engine any quieter um, but it may make it run a bit smoother I've got exhaust heat wrap to um, to sort out and I've also got a whole lot of oil that's collected in underneath the engine and I discover why in the next video which is for those of you who've watched it where I filmed that live video where I gave away that hoodie as a prize anyway thanks so much for watching I really hope you enjoyed this one now it just leaves us to cover off some brand new Crank It crew members. Right, it's with great pleasure that I announce some new Crank It crew members. We've got four this week, starting with Arthur Roy. Arthur, he's actually supported me on the Pub of the Week as well. So welcome aboard, Arthur, to the Crank It crew. And then we've got Al Graham. Al, congratulations, man. You're on the, you're on the team. And then Chris Chance, Chris, congratulations and welcome to the Cranky Crew, the cool little club that everyone wants to be involved with. Apart from my mum. And last but not least, Kevin Smith. Thank you, Kevin. Welcome aboard, sir. There are a few others, but you are going to come up in the next video, so don't you worry.